Time now to go beyond the baseline with Canada's most successful tennis player, Milos Raonic. The world number six reached his first Grand Slam final at Wimbledon this summer. He came up short there, but he's still focused on challenging for more major titles. And the 25-year-old sat down with Mike Fox to talk about all that and more. Milos Raonic is Canada's most successful tennis player and despite exiting here in Shanghai, he's come back strong after a long absence out through injury and he sat down with me to tell me about his experiences in his early career so far. Well, thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to us and understand you have a, a very busy schedule, so we appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations on, on the win, congratulations on, on a continuing good season, your best ever reaching Wimbledon final as well. You surpassed a lot of expectations of fans. Did you surpass your own expectations? Uh, I, I wouldn't use the word surpass. It's, I, I guess I'm getting closer and closer to them. I've always expected a lot for myself, and that's been always the biggest motivator for me as well. So I continue to work hard, hoping to achieve those goals. And what about last season? You struggled with injury. It took a lot to, to get back, really, didn't it? it? You had a lot of rehab physically, but mentally as well. Was yeah, it draining? It, it took a lot, and uh, it was draining during the period of playing, trying to sort of figure my way out throughout the season, th uh, sort of always trying to manage the pain, how much I can I handle, how much can't I handle, how much is okay to have. That sort of unknown was probably the most draining part, but once I stopped the season early, was able to do a good session of rehab in preparation for the next season. I started playing in 2016 well right away, so that was also something that took some pressure off my back and it really uh, allowed me to step up. But the, getting back to, to your mental strength, you kept suffering injury blows as the season went on. Did that affect you? Did that affect your game you know, in your head? Yeah, to some extent, yes. It's sort of, especially when you start getting going well, you hope that you can keep it going, create some momentum and continue playing well on a week-to-week -week basis. And if that stops you, it's a little bit disheartening. But at the same time, I've dealt with it a few times now. I've sort of found the answers and the solutions to coming back as efficiently as possible, uh, as quickly as possible. At 25 years old, you are your country's most successful singles player. Is that something that is daunting to you in any way? No, I think it's, uh, it's something that I take great pride in. And I've always uh, found that to be a, a special thing and something I've always embraced. And, Especially with the success that's uh, come with winning, also the sport has grown in Canada, which is one of the things I take the most pride in, and to see kids playing, kids participating, and adults as well. Just general participation numbers throughout Canada are considerably up to where they were before I broke through. When you're back in Canada, that's, that's a good point. What is your, your role like within the sport since you are held in such high regard? And do you have a big, big role in developing the youngsters? Well, it's not necessarily, I think it's the one thing I really focus on is giving people more access to tennis. And whether that be through building courts, repairing courts, refurbishing courts, in different ways. Obviously, throughout the winter months, it is difficult to participate in tennis, especially because the fees of playing indoor tennis are quite high and there's really no public courts. But I try to participate in that, but also making more public courts available throughout the summer so that kids can really get a taste of tennis throughout the summer and then either they ask their parents if they can participate throughout the winter and if uh, they can be fortunate enough to afford that, that's great. And, uh, and if not, they have something to look forward to the next summer and I think it's that sort of participation that's the most key because tennis isn't one of those sports that people do every once in a while. It's, it's really a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle sport and people that commit to it early on, they tend to carry it on throughout their entire life, so that's a great feeling to have. You've been tipped as one of the players, like a few players, who's going to be knocking on the door of the Big Four soon. Do you feel that is within your grasp? Yeah, I believe so. I think I've done a lot of things well. I continue to work hard, I continue to improve, and I continue to do everything I can to, to have that not only within my grasp, but to, to be able to take that away from those guys as well. And for 2017, are you looking forward to the new season or are you looking forward to, to going to a beach somewhere? No, I look forward to the new season. I, I look forward to that time of season also where we're not constantly traveling, where we can sort of buckle down, train, prepare, and try to come out into the new year as well as a better player, as a different player, and hopefully as a player that's moved on and can achieve even better things. I wish you all the best with that. Thank you very much. Okay.